Every August, the night sky puts on a spectacular show, and this year is no different. The Perseid meteor shower is back, promising fireballs, streaks of cosmic dust, and a chance to witness remnants of our solar system. The Perseids are what's known as a meteor shower, and it's caused by material that's coming off of a comet that is orbiting the sun. That's Dr. Joe Pesch, the program officer for the National Radio Astronomy Observatory at the U.S. National Science Foundation. Dr. Pesch is one of the many scientists who loves looking up this time of year, because the Perseids aren't just pretty, they're meaningful. There's a lot of dust and, and larger particles, uh, grains of sand and, and pebbles, that are in the solar system. And they're from leftover debris from the formation of the solar system. They're from asteroids that have crashed together. And they're from comets that are spewing this material. The Perseids are one of the most anticipated meteor showers of the year. But what exactly are we seeing? A meteor is a small particle, uh, typically of dust, that is crashing into our atmosphere and burning up at, at very high altitude. And so we see that particle burning up, and that's the streak of light as it passes through the atmosphere. During a typical night, you might see a few meteors. But during a meteor shower like the Perseids, Earth travels through a dense stream of particles left behind by a comet. If the orbit of the comet happens to pass uh, through the orbit of the Earth, the Earth encounters a larger number of, of debris, of meteors, and we see this as a meteor shower. In the middle of August, we see an increased number of meteors that all appear to come from one particular location on the sky. That point in the sky is the constellation Perseus, and that's where the name Perseids comes from. In this case, centered more or less on the constellation Perseus. Uh, Perseus is a Greek mythological figure that is now one of our constellations. One of the most dazzling parts of the Perseids? The fireballs, super bright meteors that seem to explode across the sky. So most meteors are very small particles, and those particles of dust encounter the atmosphere at very high velocities and they burn up. Fireballs are slightly larger uh, material coming from the comet in this case, maybe up to the size of a grapefruit, uh, a soccer ball size chunk of material. And that again encounters Earth's atmosphere and burns up. There's more material to burn up as it's uh, going through the atmosphere. And so we see both a brighter object and we see the burning trail last longer because there's more material there. Uh, the Perseid meteor shower is particularly noted because it has, for whatever reason, it's almost certainly the composition of the parent comet, uh, has many more fireballs than other, other meteor uh, showers that we encounter throughout the year. But don't worry, those meteors, even the big ones, aren't likely to hit you. Very few, if any, meteors make it to the ground. These small dust particles and even particles that are uh, sand grain size or even small pebbles almost certainly burn up 100% in the atmosphere. Even those larger chunks of rock and, and other material, grapefruit size, uh, baseball size, soccer ball size, probably burn up in the atmosphere as well. And they're burning up at very high altitudes, 50, 60 miles above the Earth. To reach the ground, a meteor would need to be something, well, a lot bigger. There's no good rule of thumb of how big that should be, but you could, you could imagine that something maybe car-sized, impacting the atmosphere of the Earth, uh, you probably need something about that large. So why is the Perseid shower considered the best of the year? Th there are two reasons for, for why we consider them to, to be the best shower. The number of meteors that we see per hour, and at peak, uh, it's been recorded that there have been hundreds of meteors per hour. And that's qu quite a spectacular show, right? If you have hundreds of meteors per shower, you're getting multiple meteors per minute. And then the large number of fireballs. Fireballs are spectacular. Again, we can see them much easier than the, the smaller meteors. They're brighter, they're, they're longer duration. This year, the peak falls on August 12th and 13th. But there's a catch a full moon. The moon is problematic, and certainly a full moon is, is even more problematic. The, the full moon occurs a couple of days before the expected peak, which is this year is the 12th and the 13th of, of August. 
So rule number one in any case, whether there's a moon or not, because meteors are faint, it's best to get to a location that's as dark as possible away from city lights. So getting out into the country, somewhere where there's not much city lights. You can do an internet search to locate certified dark sky parks. But even if there aren't any in your area, Dr. Pesh says there are still options. There are Perseid meteors that occur maybe a couple of weeks before the, the middle of August and a couple of weeks after. And so if you go out and observe in that period, you're not getting the peak number of, of meteors, but you're not being interfered with by the moon uh, to, the, to the same extent as if you are you know, going out on the 12th and 13th. So those are the two things that, uh, that I would do. Find a dark spot, bring a blanket, and give your eyes about 20 minutes to adjust. No telescopes or binoculars needed, just your eyes and some patience. And if you're wondering why any of this matters, Dr. Pesh says there's a deeper reason to look up. Meteors are an astronomical phenomenon that we can interact with, and, and they're spectacular, right? We don't know when they're, they're coming. Most of them are random. The showers are nice because they aren't as random. Any particular meteor is going to be random, but during a shower, there's a high concentration. So just interacting with the universe like this is, is fantastic. But I think more fundamentally, as an astrophysicist, I think that anything that makes people look up and feel connected to the universe is vital and important. And even more so if going out and seeing this spectacular natural phenomenon causes someone to become interested in astronomy and science. I think that's what it's all about. And yes, he'll be watching too. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to get out of the city uh, lights, but yeah, I'll, I'll go up around uh, the, the expected peak dates and, and see what I can see. It's always exciting, and again, those fireballs, we don't know when they're going to happen, but when they do, they are really awe-inspiring. And so, yes, it's, it's worthwhile going out, and I, I certainly will. So step outside, tilt your head back, and witness a cosmic shower that's been happening for millennia. No tickets, no screens, just stars and stories written in dust. We hope you enjoyed Beyond the Fireball, the Persid's meteor shower. Please consider subscribing. And if you'd like to hear about current scientific research from the researchers conducting it, check out NSF's Discovery Files podcast.